hello um i hope you're all well i haven't uploaded in a couple of weeks and i do this thing where if i miss a few videos i feel like i need to come back with this like really formal video especially like i'm behind on my kind of formal videos anyway in terms of my budget videos and my haul videos um and if i've not got time to make them properly i then just don't make a video at all which is not ideal so I don't have time to make those formal videos at the moment basically since lockdown kind of eased off I've just been really busy socialising and catching up with people and also just getting things done that I couldn't do when we were in lockdown so all my free time um, has kind of been accounted for and I've not been able to vlog properly. I have been missing it, I'm always like aware of it when I miss videos. So what I thought was this weekend I've got quite a lot going on so I can't do a proper kind of sit down video, I don't have the time but I thought I would vlog the weekend and take you along with me. So I go to London a week on Friday which was yesterday so London this Friday which has allowed it's um, like a staycation but the reason we are going is because it is my birthday a week on Sunday so I'm going to be in London for my birthday but I'm seeing my friends tomorrow um which is sunday this weekend to celebrate so today i am getting my hair done which i'm very excited about and i want to have a wander in town and potentially try and find a dress for my birthday so to update you on the saga because i know lots of you will know what i was planning to buy the dress from the vampire's wife it restocked on their own website but not on matches and basically i have 200 pounds of credit to use with matches and I also have, because it's my birthday month, they've given me a 10% discount code. So basically if the dress had restocked on matches, I would have got it for 10% off, which is like £1,600. So that would have been, that would have taken it under the one and a half thousand and then I have £200 credit. So it would just take it down so much that I'm a bit like, oh, I don't know, can I justify buying it from the vampire's wife directly? And then I was like, well, you've got the money sitting there just do it so because it's not restocked on matches and I went on last night to do it and they don't order they don't offer express delivery so I don't think it would be here in time now if I ordered it directly so yeah I don't have a dress for my birthday and I'm trying just to be chill about that not chill about it at all but I'm trying so yeah I'm gonna potentially have a look I don't really I'm out at Kew Gardens all day on the Saturday in London so I've really only got the Friday that I would actually be able to shop in London to look for a dress but anyway I am getting ready to go out just now so what you've just watched me do is put the NARS Smooth and Protect Primer on the right hand side of my face this side my right your left the Becca First Light Priming Filter on this side of my face because it is my birthday next Sunday and I am out all day I've got plans all day from like the minute we leave I've booked for breakfast uh, so I need makeup that is going to last all day because I'm not sure that we're going to have time to go back to the hotel before kind of going out at night. A large part of that is obviously foundation and my friend Lauren got this and she didn't like it so she passed it on to me to try out and if I don't like it she was like just put it in the bin because it's so bad. Um, it's the KVD Beauty Good Apple Foundation. We've got the shade Light 006. It's probably not the shade I would have picked um, if I compare this, although having said that, now that when I look at it on its own, it doesn't look too pink. So it's light 006, and then this is NARS Siberia. I feel like next to that, this looks really, really pink, but then it doesn't on its own. I do have this is probably like a good match for me. I've got quite a lot of redness in my face that doesn't actually continue down my neck, so I'm generally trying to sort of make my neck, uh, make my face match my neck. Lauren didn't like this, she felt like it really emphasised texture on her face, it didn't sit very well etc etc and I watched um, a girl called Amanda Z who I hadn't heard of before but she's actually she's got like 55,000 subscribers you know she's quite a I know compared to people with like millions that's not big but that I think that's quite a big channel um, and she said kind of the same thing as Lauren it emphasised like the hairs in her face and stuff so I suspect I'm not going to love this but it is very high coverage from what I've seen um, so that's kind of what I'm looking for 
in my birthday foundation is high coverage and long lasting um, but I thought I would test it out today and since I'm vlogging I can test it on camera so I'm gonna come scarily close the Becca primer is here the NARS primer is here um, I will show you I'll put in a clip of the products that I used in my skincare routine this morning this was how I prepped my skin so the Shiseido power infused concentrate I think that says yep Shiseido power infused concentrate Boots Ingredients Vitamin C, the Dr. Jart Ceramidin Serum, Origins Ginseng Moisturiser and the Dr. Dennis Gross Dark Spot Sun Defence Solution SPF 50. I've got a Real Technique sponge. Uh, Lauren did sanitise this before she gave it to me with the makeup sanitising spray. So I'm just going straight in. I feel like actually that's still, yeah, it's, it looks quite pink next to the NARS Siberia, which is probably very yellow. Um, but actually I don't feel it's, it's really not as pink as I kind of thought it might have been going to go. Hello, future Roisin here thought some comparison swatches might be useful for this. So this one here. This is the KVD Good Apple Light 006. You can see it's much pinker than this here, which is NARS Sheer Glow in Siberia. And then next to that, I've got the NARS All Day Luminous. So this is All Day Luminous Siberia. And All Day Luminous Mont Blanc. You know when you know a foundation's too dark for you, but you're like, oh, I'm making it work. And then you see it's watched next to ones that are better for you and you're like oh gosh am I making that work? I'm not sure. But right at the end here we have got the L'Oreal Infallible 24 hour matte in the shade 10 porcelain. So to go back that's KVD Good Apple here so then working down the way this here is MAC Waterproof Foundation in NW13. This is the Hourglass Vanish Stick in the shade Blanc. At the end we have the L'Oreal Infallible non-matte version and this is the shade Porcelain as well but the number on this one is 015. I'm actually slightly, this is a new one. And I'm sure that's the one I had before, but I feel like looking at it now, it looks darker than I remember. So this gives you a little bit of a an idea of it in comparison to some other, in theory, pale foundations. Some of which really do not look particularly pale, but it just gives you a bit of a reference point. Okay, I've done both sides of my face now. I've got a bit of a breakout going on here and I wouldn't say it's like super full coverage like it's definitely covered to a point. Does anyone else find that like you watch people bounce this on like full tattoos and it wipes them out and then it's like I've got a spot and it's not covering it like what is that? So if I come up ungodly close I don't feel like it's really emphasizing anything too much just now but I think Lauren was the same it wasn't like an instant thing it was more how it wore um, so it is 10 past 12. I am getting my hair done at 2. Uh, well, I'm going to have lunch before I leave. So I think what I'm going to do is just let the foundation on its own sit on my face just now. Just as it is on top of my primer. Go make my lunch and then we'll see what it's looking like after that. Anyway, this is lunch today. So this is this M&S The Grill range. And these are the Coronation Chicken Flatties, which I'm going to have. They were actually out of date yesterday. I'm taking my chances if I end up really ill, it's totally on me. They were on the three for £10 and I didn't look closely enough at the dates when I bought them the other day. I just bought three, so it's, it's my own fault. But yeah, these are really, really good if you like Coronation Chicken, obviously. And they also have a barbecue chicken set in this range, which I'm going to try and get more of in town today. And they're just really excellent if you're looking for a food recommendation and you're not a vegetarian. It is about half twelve. My chicken you can probably hear in the background is just about ready to go out. Um, so I just wanted to say like already I kind of feel 
like you can see the hair here um, coming through this foundation. I feel like it looks worse on this side which is the NARS side and that's the primer that Lauren liked best with it. I feel like it looks better on this side with the Becca primer. I don't think it's too bad. You know, we're about half an hour in. So yeah, I feel like I prepared it with the Becca to the NARS. I feel like this side of my face just, as you would expect with that primer, looks a bit more luminous and that's, I want that kind of luminosity, but I am quite oily, so we'll see how it wears. But yeah, this is where we are about half an hour in. Absolutely nothing on top yet in terms of powder or any other products. There is work, as always, going on next door, so I'm really sorry if you can hear the fact I have shut the window, but there is work going on next door as always, so I'm really sorry if you can hear that. Anyway, so I've had lunch, so this is, it is now 10 to 1, I really need to leave. So this is how it's been sitting on for about an hour. I kind of prefer it on this side, but I can already kind of guess that what's going to happen is this side, as the day goes on, it's going to get more oily and I am not going to prefer it. Whereas I feel like this side will last better as much as this maybe looks more luminous and like what I'm looking for on the start of the day, it's probably not going to wear very well. Because that coronation chicken was yellow, I have just had to brush my teeth and I don't know, you know these people who like do their full makeup including like lipstick and then brush their teeth last thing before they leave the house, like I don't know how they do it. So I brushed my teeth and I dripped down my chin because I'm incapable of brushing my teeth and not, so I am just going to bounce a little bit more of this on my chin. I feel like the thing is now that we're wearing masks all the time, um, th this area kind of goes anyway, you're sort of judging things based on other area because it's not really fair to judge makeup when you've got a mask pressed against it giving it constant friction, like it was never designed to withstand that, so it is what it is. Anyway, I'm just going to kind of take the excess up through the centre of my face on both sides. Anyway, I would say, like, it's definitely given coverage, but I would say I definitely still need concealer with this. I have left my colour corrector in work, so we're going straight in. This is the Kevin Kwan Essential Skin Enhancer in the shade SX01, using uh, the Real Techniques eyeshadow brush. usually really wouldn't bother concealing these but I feel like on my actual birthday if they're still there I will want to conceal them and they probably will still be there because my birthday really unfortunately happens to be when I have my period so chances are my skin is not going to be happy with me come my birthday so I'm just gonna again bounce everything in so that's how that's looking. I would say that's kind of moved a little bit on my chin and my nose where I'd, when I've concealed. Um, so I don't think this would work well with a brush based on that. I feel like it's definitely a lay it down and pat it in kind of foundation. Oh, it's so warm. I don't know why I put this top on. Okay, I'm gonna finish my hair. So I started my hair whilst I was cooking my lunch. My hair is like crazy and disgusting. I like trained my hair so I was down to washing it like once every 10 days and then kind of threw myself out of the routine a couple of times just short by like I got down I was washing it once a week actually. I did have it down to once every 10 days for a while but uh, then I started going to the gym and that wasn't really doable. Yeah, I think that was actually when my routine started getting knocked out. So I got it down to once a week. There were a couple of times that things were happening um, or I was going out or whatever that I was like, oh, my hair's not terrible, but it would look better if it had been washed. So I kind of threw my routine out and now it gets like really easy after like a couple of days. Like I just washed this on Wednesday. I suppose actually to be fair for a lot of people, they'll be like, you washed it on Wednesday and it's Saturday and you're annoyed that it's crazy. So the reason 
that I'm curling it before I go to the hairdresser. It's because I really need my hairdresser to understand what my hair actually looks like on a daily basis in terms of I want a really blunt ended cut but I want it so that it's blunt ended the way that I style it so we shall see really like basically I haven't had my hair done since before Christmas I've been kind of doing it uh, myself with like box dyes and stuff which has been fine but I wanted I wanted the kind of proper colour done before my birthday but like yeah basically I decided I wanted it done before my birthday and I just wanted it done properly the way that I like it and I know that I do like the colours and everything um, at my current hairdresser and I didn't want to take the risk of trying somewhere new right before my birthday but so people ask me a lot about how I do my hair and honestly <sighs> I like my hair more the less I actually try with it so like I just kind of feel about with my fingers like make sections as I kind of feel like I don't measure them and make sure they're the same size or anything like that I today I've done it so that they're all going away from my face but other days I'll mix it up um, yeah, I'm not, I don't really have a technique to how I do my hair, to be honest. Like, I feel like whenever I sit and try and do it, like, you know, and measure it so that it's all the same and it's all this and it's all that, I just don't like it as much. Um, you know, I don't, I feel like my hair's best left to its own devices kind of thing. That's why I'm annoyed about the fact that it's getting quite greasy at the moment, because I'm having to wash it more often and basically... Basically the less I actually, when I've got my hair down so that it's not getting super greasy, like, yeah, like I dry shampoo it, like generally if I curl it, I'll kind of, in terms of like for work and stuff, I wouldn't, like if I curled it on say like Tuesday night or Wednesday morning, I'd run that through to Friday at work, I would maybe do my hair freshly for like the weekend. Um, but again, if I curl it like Saturday, Sunday, whatever it looks like, Monday, Tuesday will just be the remnants of like whatever I've done at the weekend. I like like texture sprays, dry shampoos, things that add texture, volume, mattify my oily fine hair. So there are exceptions, like obviously if I'm going to do it sort of vintage style, like I really like like a 1920s uh, sort of full bob or like even some things like a 1940s sort of a deep wave I will try and be a bit more precise with those kinds of styles um but yeah generally my hair is pretty sort of haphazardly done so I use this which is the big diva curling wand which is the worst name ever I love how I'm talking to you with a big huge whack of hair in the middle I use it 210 degrees and I don't hold my hair on it very long but I find that gives better results in terms of lasting than using it at a lower temperature and holding it on it for longer. I'm curling kind of right down to the ends. Sometimes I'll kind of curl it to about here and then hold the end um, but I'm curling it right down to the ends today so I can explain to them what it is I don't like about the way that my hair currently ends. I mean it hasn't been cut, I don't think I even got it cut at Christmas so it hasn't been cut in like a year. It is what it is. So that's my hair kind of freshly curled. So I'll shock that all back. So yeah I feel like my skin's looking pretty good at the moment so I've got my real techniques if you're um, not new to my channel you will probably be noticing the absolute absence of any use of the Katie Jane Hughes brushes that I spent a fortune on in February wish I could send them back don't use them at all well that's a lie I do use them but I use them when I think to use them because I spent so much money on them um, so yeah that's how we feel about that but I've got the this is the Viterra 
Jewel Expert powder which is not a very mattifying powder which is again why I quite like it but in the long run maybe not the best. So I'm going to use that on my face. I feel like sometimes when I use a more mattifying powder I get texture like my pores and things show up a bit more. Um, you know and I do have quite a hairy face like in terms of people asking me about the hair in my head like it's fine and oily but there's a fair amount of it but there is also a fair amount of hair all over my body including like my face and things so yeah that's kind of the it's kind of the trade-off you make is the like I've got a fair amount of hair in my head which is nice but I deal with a lot of hair when I don't want it on that note I'm getting my eyebrows done when I arrive in London on Friday so I've kind of plucked the worst of them uh, today but try not to judge my eyebrows. Okay so that is that powder, more the outside than the inside powder. If they would actually just sell the outside powder on its own I'd be really into that. So I've popped that on my face. I feel like that's alright. Definitely feel like this bit of my nose never seems to want to hold product anyway but I definitely feel like that's I've got redness coming through there already. So I'm then on my forehead going to use this from Urban Decay which is their D Slick Mattifying Powder. Mine has broken um, and I've got a pan in it. So thinking about repressing this into, if you guys remember that Chanel powder that I panned, it was in my project pan last year um, but I didn't actually finish it until like kind of early into this year because if you look at this you can see there's marks in it and it's from when I took this to Edinburgh in, was that? End of May, start of June. And it was in my makeup bag and obviously because it is a bit broken, the top came off and then things scratched into the powder, which was really annoying because then I had powder all over my stuff, but it's also like such a waste of product. So I'm feeling like I might try and repress that powder into that Chanel compact because I kept the compact because even though the powder was terrible, um, the compact was totally beautiful. Okay so I put that on my forehead, my base done. Um, so yeah let me shove some mascara on and some blush and we'll need to go. I've changed top, this is still long sleeve. I heard this thing the other day that said like because I'm never really comfortable unless I've got a sleeve to like my elbow um, and I read this thing that said it's to do with anxiety is just that you feel exposed um, and I was like that makes so much sense uh, but yeah it's a this is one of the 80 like sort of undershirt tops so it's much much thinner I'm not melting quite so much um, so yeah I put on um, I've got a Clarins powder I feel like my nose is already like the products away basically from my nose I get a Clarins it's actually a powder from Christmas a couple of years ago but it's always been too dark for me so I use it as a blush and the Urban Decay Perversion Mascara which is super wet and will smudge all over the place by the end of the day um, but it's the mascara that I have got down at the moment because I'm trying to use it up so I need to actually go into the loft and look at my mascaras because I'm definitely not taking this one to London um, but I've got a tubing mascara and I also hate getting it off because I just never feel that it comes off properly um, I feel like I'm always picking up my eyes like three hours after I've washed it. Anyway, so yeah, no other makeup other than that has been added. Um, so in terms of my hair, bring it forward. So this is what it looks like, but I feel like uh, I don't like these sort of straggly ends and I really want it to just sort of, I just want it to like end. It's actually not as bad when it's freshly done it's as bits of it drop and it becomes a bit more obvious that some of the ends are really straggly you know so I just want it quite blunt and I think I want to go a bit lighter I don't know we will see so yeah this is me I've not got anything on my lips because I'm gonna put a mask on let's head into town oh I have worn I have applied Chanel Le Lyon perfume which is so beautiful it's definitely going to be my birthday day scent yeah so I'm hoping I'm hoping wearing my birthday day scent will attract 
the right dress. Flawed logic, I'm sure, but we'll try it. Uh, so yeah, let's go. I don't know if you'll be able to hear me with my mask on, but it is this horrible weather that is like so wet, but it's so warm as well. Like, you know when it's wet and it's just miserable and it is what it is? This is like so warm and clammy, but also wet. And I hate it. I'm Scottish. I'm not meant to deal with this. So I am home. This is my hair. I feel like I get loads taken off of it, but I'm sure it probably looks not, not very much to you guys. So it is a bit blunted at the ends, like I'd asked for. Um, in terms of the colour, I feel like with red, you always need to kind of have it for a couple of weeks and wash it and stuff before you get an idea. So yeah, he did actually, he curled it with straighteners before I left the salon, but straightener curls just do not hold in my hair. Um, so it's basically straight. Um, I never really feel that my hair looks great after I get it done, to be honest. So it is what it is. But in terms of the foundation, so this is the side of my face that had the Becca. Um, oops, I've had my mask on and I feel like that always leaves kind of strange, very straight lines. Um, so this side of my face had the Becca First Light Priming Filter on. This side had the NARS. Um, SPF 50 Smooth and Protect Primer. I actually don't feel like either side is um, massively better or worse than the other side. I feel like you can see my own sort of oil has come through a little bit, um, especially my forehead. It's looking quite dewy, but I don't think it's on that sort of slicky side of oil. So it's 10 to 7, so it's been about 7 hours um, just under. I've definitely got a little bit of texture here. I always tend to kind of get texture here and here. Um, it's definitely rubbed off at my nose, but between, it was kind of rubbed off at my nose before we even left, but obviously I've been wearing a mask that's cut right across there, um, and it's definitely kind of rubbed off here as well, but again, was wearing a mask, so it's what it is. I definitely feel like there's a bit of redness coming through my chin. I don't feel like the coverage has stayed. I feel like that's always the thing for me, is like full coverage foundations can be full coverage, and it's like, in terms of the way they wear, it's not like it's worn off like it's definitely still there there would be like a difference between this and my bare face in terms of coverage but I don't feel like it's that full coverage whereas I feel like people have been using it to cover tattoos so I'm a bit like well if it can cover tattoos how can it not cover a bit of redness um but I mean it covered it this morning when we when I left it's just kind of worn off so that's how it is but I don't feel overall in terms of like emphasizing texture that it's any worse than any other foundation um I feel like I was looking for it to do that because that's what both Lauren and the other girl whose um review I watched said happened to them um but yeah I feel like my oils definitely come through a little bit but not not too badly at all actually I don't feel like I've oil slicked it off um you know I feel like when I'm not wearing my mask it's lasted pretty all right, so I feel like my face always looks more red on camera than it actually does in real life. But yeah, no, I feel pretty all right about this. I don't know how to say it's like the best foundation I've ever used or anything like that, but um, yeah, I don't think it's it's not too bad. I don't think it's any worse in terms of like the little bit of texture that I've got in my eyebrows and the sides of my nose. I tend to get that with most foundations. I've not really. There are definitely foundations that emphasise it more, but I've not really found any that offer coverage that don't, to some extent, pick up on that. It just kind of is what it is. It is 8.40 now, so this is how the makeup is looking. It's definitely kind of worn off around my chin, around my nose, etc. as we said, but I feel like overall, like, it's really not particularly... You know, it's where the mask has been. My nose is generally an issue because it's oily. Um, so yeah, as I said, you've got a bit of texture there. I don't feel like it's too bad overall. Not that this is a particularly flattering way to look at one's face. It is half ten at night. And I am just about to take my makeup off, but... Here is a sort of final look, so this is ten and a half hours basically 
um, of wear. It's never flattering when you get the, there's no natural light now, so this is just sort of full bathroom light. So yeah, you can see like my forehead's definitely like oily, but not too bad. Like you can see it's kind of come into my pores a bit there, but again, I feel like all foundations kind of do that after a while. I don't see that this is particularly worse than any others. Um, I feel like overall though, it's held up really pretty well. I'm going to wash my face now and go to bed because I'm actually ridiculously tired even though it's only half ten. Apologies for the slightly abrupt ending. I had originally planned for this to be a weekend vlog but as you can see Saturday alone was half an hour so I decided the easiest thing to do would be to split them out into two separate videos. Thank you very much for watching this one and I will speak to you in my next video. Bye.